Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. Who's your favorite member of the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra? Um, it's a it's it's a tie between Mildred and Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, that is. I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice and banter coming at you. Cheesy banter for the new year. (laughs) Really? It's always a little bit, but it's what we do. It is what we do. (laughs) (laughs) Such shame in your face as you said that. (laughs) Uh, So now it's time for our monthly edition of This Week (laughs) in Jazz. (laughs) Yeah, where we shove a whole month's worth of non-Utah jazz-related jazz news without jazz hands. <laughs> as much as we can find non-Utah <laughs> jazz-related. Yeah, and, and, you know, into into one week. But this is going to be a little bit funny because we're barely into the new year. So we might dip a little bit back into last week, right? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, like, uh, the first thing that I see that catches my eye is that Jeff Goldblum's jazz album hit the number one spot on the charts. Yes. That would be... Um, that would be, what would we call that, sad, disturbing, <laughs> or joyous? It's kind of a combination of all, right? Inevitable? <laughs> Inevitable, yeah, yeah. No, look, I, I mean, we talked about this, I think, on an earlier, uh, a 2018, last season, a little bit about Jeff uh, Goldblum. He's having a moment, as we say, in many different ways, and we're so happy for him here, and we're just <laughs> dripping in in pride and... and, and um, no, but I mean, look, the record's not as nearly as bad as you would think it is. That's the first thing. Would you, is that... Accurate? Uh, no. <laughs> really? Is it? To, I mean, I guess it depends on how, your ex- expectations of the record. Okay, I'm saying that like let's compare it to me acting in a in a Jurassic Park movie in in place of Jeff Goldblum or yeah. you. Yeah, not. I, a, I think this might be better than we would do as an actor in a movie. His playing. Um, I don't know. It's I look more at, professional. I look at myself in the mirror and try to try to work on my poses quite a bit. So yeah. Well, um, maybe not. I don't know. Man. I don't know. I actually. <laughs> Have you listened to the whole record? No. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> no, but I have watched several of the videos. I, yeah, yeah, they're very entertaining. They are very entertaining. Yeah. So, yeah, when you combine it with that, and, and look, he's actually playing the piano. He's, yeah, he is. He's a pianist. So, from the videos, have you, have you gained some insights into maybe some crowd work you can be doing while you're playing? Give, give him one of these. Man, he's so good at that. Yeah, I'm not above doing that, but I mean, the, the, the fact that he turns so slowly and smiling so broadly, you know, with such confidence, is pretty amazing. Um, okay, so uh, one thing I'd also like to bring up here is yep. uh, this week in jazz. Yep. There's a, a really great article on uh, Pop Matters about this new book um, from Nate Chenin called Playing Changes. Have you yeah. checked out this book I haven't yet? checked it out. but Man, I'm, I'm only 50 pages in, but I'm digging it big time. That's great. Yeah, it's all about jazz in the 21st century yeah. from, from 2000 on. And um, it's just really... It's really interesting to read about such recent history and yeah, and, yeah. and this great you know uh, he's a he's a really really terrific writer um, even if you don't agree with every kind of thing he has to uh, to say about jazz in the new century it is it is a really good read totally worth it and I guarantee you're going to get some great ideas for things to listen to you know what's cool that I haven't really done um, is read a book like this with like Spotify open. And so anytime he brings brings up something I don't know, yeah. I can immediately kind of listen to it as I'm as I'm reading and get an idea of of what exactly what he's talking about. You know? Right. Well, and it's great too because you know, jazz in the twenty first century, we think, well, what is there to write about? Well, we're nineteen years in, my friend, according to my calculations. Absolutely, yeah. So I mean there there really is like to be able to start to kind of you know, uh put um some historical uh you know, view on where we're at and where things are going. It's yeah. kind of time for that to be done. So. I mean, if you think about that's like 1960 to 1979, a lot happened. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And it's always easy for us to be like, oh, it'll never be like before. But sometimes we're in the middle of, of, of things, you know. Um, so so the other things that have kind of happened in the news uh, has been all these sort of best of, like, <laughs> we had one award-winning one ourselves last week, but the best albums, you know, kind of best moments and stuff. And um, one that I was looking at, is from something called Paste Magazine, which I was a little leery of at first. Yeah. But it turns out it's a totally legit thing. And it was an interesting list. And part of it, like there's a couple on there. Well, there was at least one on there that made our list as well, so it caught my eye. Um, but there was some records I didn't really know, most of which I'm really excited 
you know, that I didn't know that came out last year, so I'm excited to dive into those. But I want to hit on one in particular, which is number 10 of their top 10 list. So it's their bottom of the line. Ooh, all the way down. All the way down. And that's Carlos Enriquez, his uh, Dizzy Conclave. Shout out to Carlos Enriquez. I want to shout him out and clown on him because, you know, I got a little <laughs> thing going with Carlos, a little a little tete-a-tete, tete, as they would say in France. Careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a family podcast. It's a family. But, I mean, you know, Carlos is a, is a wonderful bassist. I use that term very loosely. <laughs> uh, bassist and wonderful. And uh, now we have a thing going for for years. No, he's a, he's a great, very funny guy, a great bassist that's played with Wynton Marsalis and the Jazz and Lincoln Center Orchestra for years. Yeah. Um, I mean, way too many years, you know, for Winton to have him, to be honest, you know. But, I mean, look, this is such a ridiculous title. I got a clown of Dizzy Conclave. Come on. Come on, man. You know, can we do a come on, man, you know, like they do on TNT Basketball? You ever seen that episode? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, Come yeah. on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. We could do that. And it's, you know, live at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola. It's got this ridiculous picture of of Carlos when he was thinner, way thinner and younger than he actually is. Man, you is are now. really going oh, in. I'm going in. <laughs> we're, and look, we're tagging – look, tag – Carlos on this episode, all right? Carlos, and, uh, I am not in on this, by the way. I don't know him well enough to clown on him. Actually, it's probably a pretty good record, you know, of for all I said. Record. Yeah. It's Wait, got, you haven't checked it out? No. What well, friend are you? Well, now I'm just reading about it. It's got Melissa Aldana. I love oh, her playing. Amazing. Great, great young saxophonist. Uh, Mike Rodriguez and Ra- Rodriguez and Terrell Stafford, two trumpets. They're great, and they're doing some um, grooving Afro-Cuban music. So probably, oh, and Obed Calvert is on drums. I mean, this is going to be a killing record. Um, I wonder if there's a way to remove the bass as you're listening to it because it'll really be killing then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's uh, incredibly rude. You're such a great artist. <laughs> but I can't, you feel I can't go in there with you because I don't know Carlos that Dizzy well. Dizzy Conclave. So like, come on. Come on, man. Anyway, the, I guess you need to be snacking on some chili con carne as you listen to Dizzy Conclave. <laughs> Right, man. So we're forgetting something that happened in the last couple of weeks yeah. uh, for our weekly <laughs> best of. But Keezer's uh, live here at Open oh, Studio. That's right. Jeffrey Keezer. Jeffrey Keezer. Yep. He was here um, right in this very space, uh, and it's actually it's still available. Still available. It's been getting a lot of notice. If you go to Facebook and just search Open Studio, um, you can watch the entire event. It was a live in studio concert, and it was so amazing. I mean, let's Keezer put it up was on YouTube it. too, buddy. Let's, let's put it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll put it on YouTube for you, Andrew. Let's put it up on YouTube. That's how we do it. We we, we have an idea. It gets going. It gets happening. But uh, we had a great time. He had his uh, great trio here, Bob Dubu on bass and on drums. John Weekon. John Weekon. Yeah. Week on. That's right. And uh, was killing it right right here. Um, so that would be a fun thing. He did some of his original tunes. And, uh, man, a lot of music was played. And we have some really cool angles, I think, on everybody there, right? Yeah. Video and we had, like, sound was we had like the crowd a little bit too close to Jeffrey. Right. Like so, you could see our friends like Rob Endicott and Hera Gerber. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. They could have played the low octave on the piano. Well, we advertised it as you're going to be able to almost reach out and touch. That was kind of an understatement because some of them could actually reach out and touch. I thought about putting chairs on either side of the bass, like in the trio. <laughs> that would be a great that would seat, be cool. actually. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we kind of think this is newsworthy too. We want you guys to check it out and let us know what you think because um, we're thinking about doing it some more, and it's just kind of an interesting thing, especially to watch it live as it goes yeah, down. Yeah, let us know who you'd like to see it live at Open Studio. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Except for um, Carlos Enriquez. Oh he's my not, goodness! He's not oh welcome my good! I'm not so sorry, here. Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Well, I think we covered all the news for this month. All right. See you <laughs> for this week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all month. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you at the end of February. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, this week in uh, jazz. Until tomorrow, you'll hear it.